Welcome to this video on Microsoft's new and exciting business intelligence solution, Microsoft Power BI. In this demonstration, I'll be giving you a very quick overview of some of the visualizations that are available. Before we do that, I just want to give you a quick overview of the component parts to Power BI. This diagram also depicts the typical workflow that we follow when using the product. First, we have the Power BI desktop software. This is the application which you'll see shortly, and here you will have the full capabilities to be able to create your data sources, your data models, and your visualizations. Once you've created your reports, typically you would then publish this onto Power BI Online. The online system is how you would actually share your reports and how you distribute these reports to other members within your organization. Lastly, we have Power BI Mobile, which is simply a mobile application which is available for Windows, Android and iOS devices, which allows you to use the reports which you've published onto Power BI online. In order to start using Microsoft Power BI, you will need to go to the Power BI website at powerbi.microsoft.com and you will need to create yourself an account here. Once you've logged into the site, you'll be able to download the desktop application that we've just talked about. So here is the Power BI desktop application. Here on the right hand side, we have what are referred to as visualizations. Visualizations, as the name suggests, provide different ways of visually depicting chosen measures and dimensions in an interactive way. I'm going to show you a report page that I've created earlier, which is based on sales and invoice information, in order to show you some of the different types of visualizations that you can use in your reports. We'll then go on later to show you how to actually create your own visualizations. So here on our report page, we've got a number of different elements, but the first one that I want to show you is this particular visualization here, which is referred to as a line and stacked column chart. In this particular visualization, we can actually show a number of different measures. Depicted by the bars, we've actually got sales by revenue. And depicted by the line here, we can actually see the quantity of goods shipped in that same corresponding time period. We've also got a dimension here uh, by the display of this key at the top here which actually breaks down our columns into a salesperson as well. The first thing that I want to show you is the way that you can interact with this particular visualization is that here we can actually enable what's called the drill down. By turning this on, when we actually click into one of the bars, we can actually drill down further to see the breakdown by month and see the corresponding trends within that period. We can go further by clicking again and that will actually take us into days. This is because we've actually chosen to break this data down by a date and Power BI recognising that this is a date will automatically introduce the year, month and day for you to use. In order to go back up, we simply click on the icon on the left and that will bring us back to our original view. To the left of our chart, we have a second visualization here, which is referred to as a tree map. This allows us to introduce a, another dimension to our data. In this instance, we've, we've added revenue by customer. Obviously, the size of the revenue is depicted by the size of the colored squares. Something to show you at this point is that when we have multiple visualizations on a page, they actually start to interact with each other. So if I click on this particular customer record here, you'll notice that our original bar chart will now respond and we're actually filtering down the values to this particular customer. If we click again, then we remove that filter.
Whilst we are on the topic of filtering slices or another way of filtering data, and here on our page we have a number of different ones. So here we can filter by the salesperson name, we can also filter by the customer name, we've also got item and we can also filter by the month and the year as well. So here I can select any number of these slices, but if I select a particular sales person, combine that with a item by holding down control I can also combine that with a year and here you can see that our visualizations have responded and filtered down to these particular values clicking them again will remove the filters Here we have what is referred to as a matrix and this is very similar to an Excel pivot table and we can use this to show the underlying data values. Here we are showing the revenue again, um, but firstly we've got that divided down by the, the salesperson followed on by the customer code and along the top we've got this broken down by month. Very similarly again if we introduce any filters you can see this matrix responding accordingly. Along the top here we have what are referred to as cards and these are used to display key performance indicators. Again we've got revenue on the left hand side and gross margin um, and on the right hand side here we've got two additional ones for customer breadth. So important to note here that these are actually a slightly different type of calculation which aren't a simple sum. These are actually performing a unique count in each case based on the data that's on the page for the customer breadth and the product breadth. Lastly on this page we have what is referred to as a gauge and in this instance we're using it to show the progress that we are making towards an overall revenue target for a particular year. Unlike the other visualizations if I select a filtering you'll notice that this one doesn't react and with this I just simply wanted to highlight that within Power BI you can completely control how the visualizations interact with each other. In Power BI we also have custom visuals which are additional visualizations that you can install from third party developers. Here on the Power BI website here you can see a whole list of custom visuals which are available to download and install. There's one particular visual that I'm going to demonstrate to you uh, which is this one here and some credit has to go to the guys from SQL BI um, for their synoptic panel visualization. I'm now back in my desktop application and I've gone ahead and downloaded and installed the custom visual. And I've gone ahead and prepared a report page to show you how this actually works. So with this custom visualization you can introduce any arbitrary image and you can map areas within the image with a particular reference. In this case here is my warehouse with its bin locations mapped. You can then bring in data which correlates to the references that you previously mapped and this allows you to visually highlight areas of the image. I can also set thresholds against the different areas. So in this case I want to show the stock holding and the stock holding is indicated by the different colours. So red would indicate a low stock holding through to green for sufficient stock. So now that I've mapped my nav bin contents into this image, there's a number of ways in which I can use this. Firstly, I can click on a particular bin location in the warehouse, and on the left-hand side here, I've added a data table which will show me the contents of that particular bin. So here we've got the item and the quantity in stock. By clicking on the location, I'll remove that filter. The other way in which we can use this is that we can introduce a slicer which we've seen previously. Using this I can search for any item. By filtering down to that item I can see exactly where in my warehouse that is being held. Lastly at the top here I've linked my bin contents to the sales information. So I have a bar chart here which shows me my top selling items by quantity shipped. Now by clicking on any of these items, again, I can use this to locate those in the warehouse. So from a warehouse manager's point of view, they may well be interested in knowing where their best sellers are actually located physically. 
So as you can see, the ability to add custom visuals from the large library already available hugely enhances the product further. So within your desktop application, once you've created a number of report pages which you are happy with, you can then push this onto Power BI Online simply by clicking the publish button here. We'll be covering Power BI Online in another video, but in the next video we'll show you how to create some of the visualisations that we've seen so far. In the previous video we saw a number of different visualisations and I'm now going to show you how you can create these yourself. In principle they all work in a very similar way. So here I have a report page which is blank so I'll click anywhere on the page. And the first thing that I want to show you is the line and stacked column chart which we saw previously which is that this icon here. So if I click on that, that will put a placeholder on the page for me which I can resize. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my first parameter which is the invoice date and I drag this into the shared axis. As we saw previously, as it recognises that it's a date field, we automatically get the year, quarter, month and day. Now if we're not interested in any of these particularly, in my previous example I wasn't interested in quarter, I can go ahead and remove that. The next thing that I want to do is I want to bring in my first measure which is revenue. So if I take the revenue field from my data set, I can bring that into the column value. So you can see the visualization start to build up. For the line values, I'm interested in the quantity shipped. So if I drag the quantity into the line value, that now gets added onto the chart. And in the previous example, we broke this down by salesperson. So we can introduce this third measure by dragging the salesperson code into the column series. And as you can see, very quickly we've been able to replicate what we saw in the previous example. And very much in the same way, if we click on the drill down button here, we can interact with this in very much the same way. With our visual, we also have a number of different properties which we can set by clicking on this icon here. So here you'll find things such as the title and things such as the um, text colour, the background colour, to change the look and feel of the visualisation. Next we'll add a slicer, which we saw previously, by clicking on this button here. So again, if we just click on anywhere blank on the page, we can click the slicer and that will bring this onto the page for us. If we're interested in filtering this by the salesperson, I can take the salesperson name and drag that into the slicer. If I navigate back up with our data and I select any salesperson, you can see this now changing the bar chart that we have on the left hand side. Next I'm going to show you how to create a matrix table. So if we click on our page and click on this icon here, this will bring in a data matrix. Firstly, we need to introduce the values that we are interested in. So in this case, if I want to see my data by revenue, I'll take the revenue field and put that into the values box. Against the rows, this is how I want to divide that data up. So firstly, I might be interested to see this by the salesperson. So if I bring the salesperson name into here. And as a subdivision to the salesperson, I might be interested in seeing this by the specific customer. So if I take the customer name and drag that into the rows as well, I get a further subdivision. Along the top, I can introduce a further breakdown. In this case, if I'm interested in seeing this by month, then I can simply take the month and put that into the columns field. So as you can see, we've been able to again very quickly replicate the previous table that you saw. As I've mentioned, all of the visualizations work in a very similar way. Each one will come with slightly different parameters here on the right hand side. But once you've created a few of them, you'll begin to get the hang of them very quickly. So with a few examples that we've seen, hopefully from this you'll be able to see how easy it is to build up a report page on Power BI.